Good day, YouTubers. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls from all around the world. We are painting the other side of the ship. We have finished on the far side. And now we're working on this side. And this week we have got the blue done and now we're working on this yellow trying to get a thick enough coat I can cover this blue where it came over the edge I'll probably have to do some touch up. You got to get it on there. Pretty thick. You can see my brush is dripping. It doesn't help that I'm shaking a little bit. That's thick enough, I think, when that dries, it'll cover that blue there. And we got two more rubbing stakes to get down after this one. You can use the paint on the heel of that brush to keep you from having to go get more out of the pocket. So I got this here instead of the container just to make it easier to work with. So We slowly putz along here. Getting a nice thick layer on there. Especially where that joint's at right there. Try to hide it. Then this Friday, I think it's Wednesday today. I'm going to Tennessee. Next week I'll be out of town. You say, what are you doing, Roger? Now I'm going to put my electrician skills back into work for a week. There's a uh, construction project at the headquarters of CBM, which is Children's Bible Ministries. And they're building a 30 by 70 chapel slash meeting hall at their headquarters in Tennessee. And the actual um, company that's doing the building is CWE, which is Construction for Worldwide Evangelism. 
And CWE is based out of Tampa, I think. And they do projects all over the world for other missionary groups, organizations. Now, I did a CWE construction job oh, probably 10 years ago in the Dominican Republic. And we built a medical center for a missionary there that was a doctor on I can't remember the name of the town but it's on the coast of the southern part of Dominican Republic not a big tourist area but this, this is for the people that live there not for the tourists So as an electrician this week, or next week rather, I'm leaving Friday, be back next Friday. I'm going to be bending conduit, EMT pipe, electrical metallic tubing. There's all the wiring in the building. It's got to be in conduit per the code in that area. And then I'll be pulling wire, getting it ready for the completion of the rough end stage of the building. There'll be other guys there working that are plumbers and air conditioning guys and carpenters. They do this in a four week time period. First week they do the slab and the framing or block or whatever the building's made out of in the roof. And then the second week they come and do the shingles and windows and doors and get it all dried in and stuff. And there's a team each week, a different team each week from different churches or different companies that are doing this as a volunteer basis. Obviously I'm volunteering my skill of being an electrician. I've been a lot of pipe over the years. So running pipe and bending it and strapping it down making it look good and then put the wire in it and mount the boxes that'll be for the whole building so that'll be lighting and receptacles and whatever else there'll be in there electrical wise so I'll be gone next week I probably won't have any content. Of course, when I get back Friday, I can work on this Saturday a little bit and try to put up a video. But we got to take one day at a time. I was just peeking at the other side there to see how I did that. I 
keep bumping the camera with the butt of my brush because it's so close to the work area here. I don't know if it's easier to go right to left or left to right. Either way, you got to get the paint on there. So we survived the hurricane. Other than the greenhouse skin the frame stayed intact because I got it anchored down to the ground really good but that wind and everything just ripped that skin off of the greenhouse so I need something to rest my wrist on because I used to paint this is too short. I used to paint signs for a living. One of my first jobs and even the shakiest a person can do a good job painting a sign if he's got something to rest his hand on. I really need a long one. down to the bench yeah that'll work so I got all my stuff packed up And of course I'm taking a whole suitcase full of hand tools and a separate suitcase for my clothes. They provide all the materials and the conduit benders and fish tapes and all the stuff you a normal electrician would have on their truck other than the hand tools I'm adding a little paint here where that blue was showing through you can see I got a very generous amount on my brush and now it's just a matter of spreading it out without going over the line See, all that paint is on the heel there. I can mesh the heel in a spot that I haven't painted yet and get a nice little blob of paint from the heel and then use that to spread it, especially into the areas where the blue might show through. I 
it's not rocket science it's just a matter of making it look like you want it to and just like painting a letter you do one edge of the letter at a time then you go back and fill in the middle after you get the outer edge and the inner edge done I'm going to lay that blob of paint that's on the heel of the brush right in this area here. Mush it out. And then spread it where it's covering that blue with a nice thick layer. If you don't have enough paint, you're going to be doing it more than once. When I did the other side, I did the same thing. I still probably will go back. I've sort of done two coats up here on the railing, especially on those inside edges where the laser cut the wood. It's sort of black where the laser was. You really got to get it on there thick. But you don't want blobs hanging out. Blobs are bad if you got masking. Because when you pull the masking off, it'll show where you had too much. So you sort of got to Check it real close to make sure there's not a blob somewhere in those corners and edges where the paint wants to get pulled off your brush and make a little pile. Alright, so we got the yellow. Now we're working on making a mark for the black. So we got a 10 millimeter reference in the plans from the middle of the ship here come down 10 millimeters and make a mark and then they're using some kind of can or something and making a, a makeshift device that you can drag along the hull and transfer that mark to all the other places so I'm using this flat edge here after I got this thing set to that same height and then just going in making sure that flat edge is down on the hardwood surface there And making some reference points that I can follow with the tape. And I'm using pencil instead of a black marker or something because this isn't exact and when I put the tape on this is going to help me make a, a straight line with the tape. I just got to get some little mark every now and then. So I can put the tape on. 
making sure that one flat surface is down on the wood before I mark. And then I should be able to turn the ship around and do the same thing. Yeah, I've got some light marks there all the way to the back. Make sure the ship was in a good spot on the stand. So now I'm going to make a little mark there and text, test it with ten millimeters on this side because the ship could be rocked in there a little bit yeah it doesn't fit exactly up against this rib here and my 10 millimeters is like two millimeters off on this side so instead of moving the ship I want to adjust this to the right height. So everything in this area above that mark is going to be black. This is a little bit too low. This thing isn't easy to adjust. That looks good right there. Let me tap it a little bit. Yeah. Tighten that back up. See, we're just making a light indication and we'll check that where it comes around the end on both the front and the back make sure they're close to lined up with each other It's hard to see from where I'm at that the mark is going on there, but when you look down like this, you can see it. I think this will work as long as they line up on the front and the back. 
they don't all have to adjust where they come together at. Because you can really only see one side of the ship at a time anyway. See, I'm pushing down on this flat spot on here to make sure it's on the surface of that table flat. So it's coming out just below the beginning of that bottom hole. And this side is just below the beginning of the bottom hole. That's pretty close. This looks a little bit lower. Well, it might be the same. I think we're good. Good enough. Now we got to put, tip it up on its side like we had before and put the tape to it. See, I got this piece of styrofoam that I've sort of whittled out for the bow and stern of the ship. And it holds it really good. And then when I want to lay it sideways to get a bit of better stability, I'll put this towel in there. And the towel keeps it from rocking around. And I can move it easily without taking something loose and so let me get her set up here that's the bow I would want that off of there it up like that so we can see our mark real good and put tape on there we'll have to go across the back too and make sure that's lined up so let me start taping it Okay, so I looked through my selection of brushes, and what I'm looking for is when I lay that edge down on the top there, that I don't have a bunch of hairs. This might be a little stiff. Most all these are used. Here's one here. This one's a little softer. I used one like this for the blue. And it's over there soaking in mineral spirits, so 
I'm going to use that for touch up for the blue. So yeah, this will be a little better. But I got the tape stuck down all the way around. Everything lines up good in the front and the back. So now we dip into that. I uh, mix this up pretty good. This is Rust-Oleum oil base gloss enamel. Get a good bit on there. See the white showing through a little bit right there. So take some of this extra paint that's on the tape and bring it up. So I'll probably have to do two coats, even though I'm laying it on there pretty thick. Because when I push on this brush to spread it out, see how it dragged paint away from... <clears throat> it's not like there isn't enough on there. And I lay the brush almost flat. That way the end of the brush isn't pushing into the paint. And then make another stroke that's lighter. That's giving me good coverage there. So put a little bit more on and wipe one side off. Let's come down here and finish this rear. We got a lot on the brush on one side, but we don't want to Let it all get away until we spread this out. And at the same time, get it up to the bottom of that rubbing stake. Uh, I didn't mask off the top blue line there. <laughs> See how good you are. Putting that tape on, you got to make sure it's stuck down really good. And when the paint is thick like this, if you get the ship to lay where the paint can flow little hints of white showing on that edge so I'm trying to get rid of them before I move 
There's a little bit of white. Showing right there. Set the brush down and I'm going to adjust this to be a little flatter. So the paint will flow a little better. We can see the underside of that line too. So now up here, got stuff in the way. We got a good a bit. I can I can see a little blob of paint that's. A little almost too much there so I'm pulling it flat get some of the excess off of this tape looks pretty good down through there so now I'm gonna dip clean one side off and get a new load here bring that load up just under that yellow Anywhere I see the white showing through, I'm going back in there and adding a, a wet blob on top. And because we're doing it like this laying on its side we'll have to wait till this dries before we can do the other side now in this curve where the paint wants to run downhill we want to make sure there's a lot on there, but not too much so we don't get any runs. Okay. This time I got a load on both sides of the brush. I'm not scraping one side off because I want a lot of paint. So I can do whole, this whole area with one load.
this laying pretty flat so the paint should flow I don't have any flow troll in it. This is oil based so you're sort of limited by I could have put mineral spirits in it and thin it out a little bit. But then you can have runs real easy if you thin it out too much. It's easy to get it where it's hard to work with. When it's fresh out of the can, a little bit better results for coverage. See, there's a couple spots there where the yellow went too far. I got all this painted up in here, so we got a lot of touch up work to do, but. There's one side of the water line and the black paint on. We're going to let it set. I think I'll turn this fan around. Right now it's exhausting out. I'll turn it around and let it blow in. And that'll help this tack up and dry quicker so we don't get runs. From what I see at the angle of the side, it doesn't look like we're going to have a run problem. But you never know. Yeah, right in here, there's a run. That's fairly long. It's draping down the hill. Because this part isn't laying flat like the rest. And then another one over there. Sure hope I got that tape stuck down good. But we got white paint we can touch up. We got blue paint we can touch up. So let me put this in some mineral spirits and let this dry. Okay, it's the next day and we got the black done on the other side. So both sides are done on the waterline black paint. Let's see if I can set this so we can see the other side and then put it back till that black dries. Black on this side. Both of them lined up the front and the back. So, get to put these little grates on next. I got a lot of little uh, places where I got to clean up the paint with a tape let some of it bleed back on this yellow up here on the top but for the most part that'll be not too hard so this got to line up with the notch on that and the notch on this And then the same over here. Like that. So that one there will.
will fit. Good thing we did the glue up on those before we got too far ahead of ourselves. The other one should be pretty cut and dry too. Yep. But we'll definitely want to get the computer up and running, make sure we're doing the right thing next. But I think that's what it showed. Thanks for watching.